Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're, foc we're focusing in on one of the very important and very uh, indelible uh, narcissistic and really psychopathic uh, traits uh, for manipulation uh, tactics to inundate um, their target, their prey, really, in the case of the psychopath. And that is really that of um, extreme uh, flattery and um, what we're going to call love bombing. And this obsequious flattery, this servile nature, um, where they um, can't stop uh, adoring you, they can't stop inundating you with sweet gifts, uh, sweet things that they're going to say, um, being overly polite, overly courteous, you know, bringing you an eclair, opening the door for you, getting your coffee, uh, like filling the gas tank up for you, uh, you know, giving you that greeting in the morning that you seem to now cherish, um, where hitherto you had just begun your day and dove into your work. These are, are uh, basically syncophantic behaviors. Syncophantic, which means behaving or done in an obsequious way, which means, in essence, to gain advantage over you. And these are very important terms for you to understand, uh, large words, okay, uh, intellectual, of course, but when we understand and talk about um, psychological terms in the love bombing, I want you to understand exactly what this, what this is, how this is accomplished by a psychopath and how it had essentially caused you to abandon your morals, your boundaries, things that you believed in for this individual. So the superficial flattery uh, that a psychopath will uh, provide is very much meant to increase the feel-good reward chemical within you, which is dopamine. And this dopamine uh, this increased level in your in your uh, brain, this neurotransmitter is what gets you addicted. It's this feeling of elation. It's this feeling of uh, being in sublime, being in heaven, being in the Garden of Eden, um, being in this altered reality, uh, being in this very safe, comforted, uh, close place with them, which they create within you. Um, and this is very much done through... Uh, uh, coddling, coaxing, seduction, um, all the tactics that go into the love bombing. In the love bombing, can, this can be uh, very gratuitous in nature, where they'll almost even call you by childhood names. And I'm not just talking about, you know, real life relationships where they'll call each other honey, sweetie, baby, whatever you have, but they'll really develop uh, very kind of cute nicknames for you. But to the uh, detriment of calling you by your real name. So they won't ever call you by your name. They'll call you by some sweet uh, nickname that is meant to really kind of uh, depersonalize you. Which in essence is what all this love bombing does. So they'll, they'll call you uh, Sweet Pea. They'll call you Bunny. They'll call you... Uh, uh, Booper, they'll call you uh, Nina, they'll call you, you know, all these different made up names <laughs> that are just like, I mean, it's it's funny. I mean, and, and I see it very typically and, and very, um, in a very specific pattern. I mean, it's, it's very much um, congruent with all the love bombing phase. Um, and really, um, you know, it's, this takes place in the narcissistic uh, realm as well, but when we talk about the psychopathic individual, we're talking about with a, a real, real severe and profound depersonalizing in the love bombing phase. And um, uh, Thomas Sheridan, in his book, um, The Labyrinth of uh, the Psychopath, The Puzzling People, he talks about the extreme and obvious flattery uh, the emulating and sycophantic behavior, uh, which is designed to release large amounts of dopamine and norepinephrine while reducing low activity in serotonin uh, within the victim's brain so that the victim becomes emotionally dependent on the psychopath and thus becomes highly vulnerable to the psychopath's suggestions. 
the areas of the brain that produce uh, the dopamine become hyperactive and are directly related to addiction. And since they're teens, the psychopaths have learned to manipulate their victims through this technique. Um, and so, you know, when we talk about um, sycophantic behavior, um, it is done in a way to gain an advantage. So it's not just like a sweet term that you have developed through an intimacy and a closeness. It's a way to gain an advantage over you. And so uh, when he talks about um, obsequious, this is uh, also related to being servile. They're almost slave-like in nature to you, where they're so ingratiating. I mean, the, uh, the number of things that they do, um, taking you out to lunch, uh, talking, you know, uh, about uh, taking you for a walk in a garden, if they find that you're kind of like this romantic person. Remember, they'll create and craft a mask which is designed to capture you uniquely so the way that they treat you will be different from the way that they treat another and they will simultaneously juggle a number of different targets um really the uh, the uh, the height of energy which they have to move between various groups people individuals that they're cultivating a mask for is absolutely astounding um the amount of energy that they have. And this again is due to their propensity of boredom. So that is why you see this juggling of activities, events, organizations, uh, different facades and masks, which they literally will craft and put on um, to satisfy this um, excessive dopamine, uh, which is uh, responsible for their reward seeking behavior. And it is in such an elevated level that they will engage in this very high risk uh, behavior um, and oftentimes seek it out and then kind of uh, lure people in, seduce people into this other, this also high risk behavior, which could be uh, high risk in sexual activity, high risk in terms of um, talking about people behind their back, asking them to, um, you know, uh, really, uh, you know, stop taking care of their kids or stop taking care of their business or uh, live, you know, into more gambling or, um, you know, move their location where they're living um, because they want, you know, or go on a vacation or be very suggestive of these high-risk behaviors, which, you know, are dangerous in nature. Uh, dangerous in nature meaning um, not healthy, not safe, but, you know, highly aroused, um, so we see the Ponzi schemes like we hear on Wall Street um, in the U.S., you know, so, uh, you know, these high, uh, what was that um, movie where, where the, the psychopath, uh, the big short or something of that nature where you talk about these, um, you know, uh, stock market uh, brokers and things of this nature where they're, you know, lying to people and they're, um, you know, selling them these uh, uh stocks that don't exist, you know, so these are typical uh, psychopathic behaviors or pursuits um, and very high risky in nature, but they tend to then sort of pervert those people who they are with. So the people who hitherto were not really that way, they then get them addicted in this dopamine through this servile nature, through excessive flattery. Um, which is designed to get an upper hand over them. And so they might even, you know, tell you uh, things that, that are meant to make you feel like you're being overpowered. Um, they might physically take their hand and say, you know, my hand fits just right on you. I mean, they'll, they'll use these um, very obedient, they'll seem extremely obedient to you. And I think that's what Thomas Sheridan is alluding to in his description of the psychopathic love bombing is that you all of a sudden you have this this person who is just honed in on you, um, just extremely obedient and attentive to an excessive or servile degree, where you just feel like you've been swept off your feet. And of course, you know what person, um, you know who is naive to this sort of love bombing would not feel ingratiated by this person, who is you know opening up doors for you or getting a coffee for you or, you know, little sweet things that like really make your day. 
I can't tell you the number of clients who, you know, have said, you know, they got me such meaningful gifts, little things, you know, that I would have loved, a car charger for my phone, um, you know, they got me this, they got me that, this cozy sweater, you know, they got me this vest, you know, your sanity is more important than a car charger for your phone, I mean, what I'm trying to explain is that they will be very servile to you, um, obedient, get you these quote-unquote meaningful gifts, but yet, you know, behind your back, they're really, you know, they've, they're working other people, supply, having other relationships, and it's just meant to keep you there supply for the short term or whatever that reason might be. It's generally for sexual reasons, um, you know, if these are relationships in your teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, I mean, even later in life, but I mean, when, when we're talking really hypersexualization, when they're working a number of targets, so, you know, you might meet these people on a lot of dating sites. I definitely don't recommend uh, dating sites. This is like a predator's psychopath's playground. Um, I, I just don't recommend any sort of dating uh, websites. And, um, you know, furthermore, in the love bombing, they'll engage in, in word salad, which is using complex phrases and verbal confusion to make them seem wise and learned in the eyes of others. Um, and when you really um, look at what they're pontificating, uh, this is Thomas Sheridan um, speaking here, um, that they're really saying nothing meaningful or original. And... Um, and so um, you have to just be very, very careful about this love bombing phase and that how they're getting you addicted, in essence, dependent on them. So it's when you enter into relationships and we see this uh, attractiveness of, you know, the, the codependent type with a psychopathic individual, the person who is very giving, loving, a good heart, um, very naive, um, you know, uh, very much, you know, wanting excitement, uh, someone who is wanting this in their life, uh, that could be, you know, going through a hard time. And so this person comes in and it seems like they're saving grace. They're just, you know, uh, thrilled, uh, they have high levels of excitement, um, with this person. So really they catch people, um, when they're down, when they're out, they could be, you know, experiencing, you know, certain high levels of success in their life. But in an isolated area, they're down. And so the psychopath will very much scope these people out and realize that they know that they can provide the excitement, the thrill, uh, the uh, emotional charge that will get them kind of, you know, uh, really sort of leaving reality, I would say, or forgetting about their life. Uh, it'll These psychopathic relationships really cause people to forget about their life, forget about their uh, their values, their importance, uh, what they're focused on in the, their true career. Um, I've had, you know, there's been a number of t people's stories who, uh, people who have lost, you know, homes, you know, a lifelong savings to these individuals because they were so addicted to the dopamine, the feel good, uh, chemical that the psychopaths had created. And it's kind of like, um, you know, uh, you, you become dependent on them. So you have to be very careful that you have to retain your independence. You should be depending on yourself and not give um, all this sort of a way, this sort of self-care away to this psychopath who wants to quote unquote take care of you. And that is their illusion. But yet when they create that projection and you start to see when, when the mask starts to slip and you see really this evil cold person, you realize that it was just a mask and a facade. So really that, that is, you know, the reality and reality is your best friend. <laughs> you know, denial is not going to, um, prevent the pain. It's only going to procrastinate and make it worse. So the more you can really come to accept, um, what this is and work through the very vigilant, um, and hard work that comes in the beginning with, uh, your affirmations, um, writing in your recovery journal, uh, taking the steps to uh, recite your affirmations, your I am, again and again and again and again, especially if you're in that phase where you're coming off of that hypersexualization, that um, feeling of uh, disorientation, disarray, fear, the terror, you know, kind of that um, 
feeling of extreme uh, loss when you're not with them, that dopamine uh, is looking to be fulfilled and satiated and that nothing else can satisfy it except this person. Realize that you're maybe quite possibly going through an addiction to this person, which is different from love. Uh, love is not an addiction. Love is a, a, a feeling of mutual respect. 